five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys. Um, number one. Good morning. That is not our mansion back there. <laughs> Wish. Yeah, that would be really nice. But yeah, good morning. Um, Actually, I don't want a house that big. No, I do. No, that looks like a lot of cleaning. If we have ever have a house that big, it's because we can afford somebody to clean it. <laughs> no, I don't want somebody to come do my cleaning for me. Well, me either, but I'm just saying, if somebody, when somebody has a house like that, for sure they have a cleaning, no? Yeah, but I don't want somebody to come do my cleaning for me. I don't ever want somebody to do that for me. Ever. That's taking away somebody's paycheck. Babe. I know what you're saying. I'm just okay. playing with you. I never want somebody to do my cleaning. I never want somebody to do my cooking. I want to do my own cooking. I want to do my own cleaning. So I never want a house that big, guys. I just want, I just want a, just a regular little house, a brick house, like you said. A brick, brick house. A brick Actually, house. that brick house I keep driving by and I like. It's big though, sort of. It's Is a it, three bedroom. It's about that size. It's a three bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I think a good little three bedrooms, a good size, right, guys? Any, anyways, you guys are like, why are they in sunglasses, and why do they have a mansion behind them? Why? Because we finally took the drive, guys. We finally took a drive. You remember I told you guys that I just, I told them the other day, can we just drive somewhere? Can we just get away? And he actually told me, do you want to just drive somewhere? I'm like, yes, let's go. And we got up this morning. I didn't tell anybody anything. Yeah. Nobody. Not even the boys. I didn't even tell my boys until I texted them later. I said, guess what, boys? We just yeah. took a drive so, and that was it. Um, and you took me for that horchata frap. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. So um, earlier, guys, in Los Angeles for two years. Well, actually, I say the whole thing on the video. So check this out. Hey, guys. Um, oh. Look, there's my little wife. Hi. So today is, um, it's going to be hot in Stockton. I know. So we are in downtown Oakland, California on a mission. I know. He brought me out. So you guys, we finally got that drive out. Yeah. And he brought me out to actually Tierra Mia. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Well, here's the thing, right? For two years, mm -hmm. we wanted to go to this coffee place that we saw in Los Angeles or in Southern California, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a Starbucks, Latino Starbucks. And we're like, this looks amazing. And then it kept showing that, um, that horchata. Um, it's an horchata frat. A, oh, yeah, an horchata frat. So we finally went to it when we were in, in Southern California, what, two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. It was really good. Yeah, and then we, we were really happy, and then we were, were really sad because... They didn't have any around here, but we found one here yeah, in Oakland. Yeah, we found one in Oakland. Yep. So, so uh, you, I brought my camera because you're actually going to take me to go take some pictures around and stuff. Yeah, so. there's a heat wave going on, and we're like, let's go beat the heat. Let's get to the Bay Area, closer to the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a second, the coffee place. So I'm gonna flip it around in case you guys never been to Oakland. Uh, we're actually here, Broadway. This is downtown Oakland. Let's go to the corner here. Did you lock the car? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's Pandora. Pandora, I mean Pandora. Pandora. Wait. Hey. Oh, why are you bumping into me? You're bumping into me. No. Stop so yeah, we're in downtown Oakland and we are going to experience this coffee again. It's only like 40 minutes away from us, which is a lot better than driving six hours to Southern California to have this coffee. But anyways, guys, uh, I'll be back. See you later. So guys, I don't know who owns this place. I don't know what the process is, but their coffee is really good. If you're in Southern California, you probably already know about this place. But if you are in the Bay Area or Northern California or come out to the Bay Area often. And you want to open up a business, you need to open one of these. You need to open one of these up right next door, right, right next door to our house. I was seriously, um, Tierra Mia coffee here in Oakland. 
you got to come check it out. Psh, look at that. Not only are they amazing, they're quick. So, um, man, I just wanted to share this place with you. Tierra Mia in Oakland, downtown Oakland on Broadway, right in the center of the city. Look at this. They're not playing. They're not playing. All right. Okay. So, yeah, man. That place is amazing. Downtown Oakland. So, by now you know we came to the Bay Area. We were like, you know what? Let's go for a drive. Let's go and, and just kind of get out of the area. And it was going to be 101 today. Mm -hmm. Which I know, I know Vegas. I know Phoenix. That ain't nothing. But for us, it makes us melt like butter, right? So um, we drove toward the coast, you know, and we're here. And um, should I show them what we're facing? Yeah. You know what? We, we kind of know this little place because when we actually came out with one of our groups, and we're not that that far from home, guys. So when we came out with one of our groups, we kind of came out this way. And that's why it was the closest place, a little further out for us to drive out to. And we figured, well, let's just drive there. And we're actually sitting on a bench under the shade. It's kind of cold, believe it or not. And, um, and we're just overlooking at God's grand beauty. And it's just beautiful. And then we find out that there was an earthquake in Stockton. In Stockton, okay? And I'm all trying to call the boys like, hey, is the fish tank okay? You know, because... God forbid. <laughs> so we, I, all of a sudden, our phones start blowing up, right? Even yeah. for people from the church, because the church is in Modesto, but we yeah. live in Stockton. And my people are phones about are blowing it. up. You guys all right? You guys all right? I'm like, how do you guys know? How do you guys know we got away? You know what I mean? And they're like, man, there was an earthquake in Stockton. You know, or like right out Farmington, which is right... On the outskirts of Stockton. Yeah, you know? and and yeah. I was kind of worried about the fish tank actually, you know, um, because we don't have it strapped and we should, but we don't. And I've been calling my boys and they didn't answer. And so finally I got a hold of my boys just to make sure that the fish tank was fine. Um, but everything's cool at home, thank God. So it wasn't that big as a four point something, which yeah. those of you that don't live in Cali, four point it's very small. It's, it's nothing, but I was just concerned about the fish tank. Yeah, you know, the big one back when when the portion of the bay bridge fell that was i think a 7.8 that was a big one i remember that one i remember the northridge one too the northridge is a good size one too yeah yeah but guys let us let us share with you i brought my camera i was so excited when he told me he was just gonna take me up here just so we can you know because i have a lot to do tomorrow guys you know so he's like let's just go spend the day up there um well another thing too is the fact that those of you that don't know, in the valley where we're at in California, um, anytime a heat, heat wave comes, people make their way toward the Bay Area. Because even though it's literally an hour west, it is like 30 to 40 degrees less. So yeah. if it's 100, it's 101 in Stockton, it's 60 something here. You know, and so that's like the go to place, you know. And uh, we've done this many times over the years when we know it's a hot and it's actually going to be hotter tomorrow and the next day. But we were too busy those days. Yeah, I have a, yeah. a meeting with the, the teachers on Saturday morning and I have uh, we're having a, a brunch meeting with all the teachers at the house. And um, and I'm going to be busy that day and then I have busy preparing for everything tomorrow. So I'll be just busy all day tomorrow. So, guys, um, let me show you what I'm looking at. Yeah. That is the ocean. Let me make it wider so you can really see. There it is. Now, is that amazing or what? I don't even know if it's doing it justice, but... It is really nice. You'd probably rather look at that than our faces during this devotion, but too bad. I'm going to flip it back. <laughs> Let's see here. There right, we are. We're back. All right. We're a little tilted. Is it? You got to pull the trigger. I don't want to pull it. I don't want to break anything. You guys, it's not a gun. It's tilted this my, way. My, um... That way. What are you... It's like this? It's tilted this way. <laughs> Babe, stop it. Right there. 
my gosh. The um the tripod has I feel a, like we're like this. Has like a trigger that allows it to move, you know. So anyways, guys, um the subject of the day is getting away and how important it is. Um this is not costing us nothing but gas. You don't have to go and get a five-star hotel and do this and go to a fancy restaurant. We literally parked on the side of this. This is like, it just goes down into the coast. And these benches are just set up all along just to sit. Um, you know, in case you're like, well, what does this have to do with relevant Bible talk? Well, okay, you want a biblical? Um, let's go biblical. You want to go biblical? Sure. You know, it was a blessing too, right before we came, like my son, um, comes down and he's like, he's like, here, mom, he goes, and I was like, what's this? And he's like, oh, I, I guess he had gotten a, a, a card and it had 50 bucks on it. He's all, this is for you guys just to use it on whatever, you know, and uh, that came as a blessing right before we even left to you. And yeah. I was like, wow, thank you. Yeah. Cause we're going to buy some snacks and water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. like, thank you. You know, I'm like, that's awesome. You know? And he didn't even know that we, I didn't even tell him we were coming out here like this. So yeah. I was just like, you know, you're awesome. Thanks, mijo. So the Lord provides, you know, I thought that's cool. So anyways, man, biblically speaking, Jesus, uh, the, the more and more that his ministry grew, right? Because if you really pay attention, when you read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that, that follow his life, you know, um, all the way from the very beginning when he preached in um in the synagogue and they try to stone him and throw him off a cliff um he got more popular and more popular and and maybe some of you uh, if you've ever read like a lot of times he'll heal people and he'll be like don't tell nobody don't tell and, and many times people read and they're like why does he why does jesus say not to tell anybody because he knew what was going to happen is because people tell people next thing you know you know and he had a mission to do he had to preach the gospel he had a mission to do before he went to the cross. So he didn't want to, um, he wasn't clout chasing. Yeah. He wasn't trying to be like, oh, look at I got a healing ministry. He healed out of compassion, not because he wanted the crowds. Does that mean, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. So as, as, as his ministry progressed, I mean, you got to understand, right? Jesus um, is God in the flesh. Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifested in the flesh. So that means he got tired. Yeah. He, he got tired, he, he you know. He felt everything exactly as we feel now. Yeah, he would get exhausted. He would get tired. Matter of fact, um, there's a few occasions where um, he didn't have the ocean, but he had um, the, the Galilean Sea, the, Gal the Sea of Galilee. And he would tell the disciples, you know, he'd be like, hey, Man, I'm, I'm tired. Take me to the other side. That'd be like seven, 8,000 people. And, and because of him being so compassionate, he would preach and heal them and, and cast out demons. And guys, um, when I prayed for the sick on Sunday, last Sunday, it drained me, man. I went home and knocked out, didn't I? Yeah, absolutely. So imagine, imagine the Lord, just thousands and thousands of people, right? And how could he turn people away? Yeah. But he told the disciples, he was taking me to the other side of the lake. Um, so one time he got to the other side and all the people followed along the coast. So by the time he got there, all those same people were there all over again. And he was exhausted. But there was but once, because you asked me before the video to tell you, and I couldn't remember, I just remembered one. And, and maybe you'll remember, um, he actually told the disciples he was even tired of them. He told them, he goes, listen, babe. Yes. Um, I was going to say, listen. Uh, he said, go to the other side and I'll meet you over there. That's kind of weird because Jesus didn't have a boat, but they just obeyed. So they went over there and he actually went up to the mountain to be by himself. Because sometimes he even needed to decompress from those closest to him too. You know, and that's actually the part where Jesus walked in the water. Because they were wondering, like, how's he going to, why did he tell us to go to the other side and he'll meet us there? How's he going to do that? Well, he just walked in the water. But a lot, a lot of times that scripture um, 
overshadows the fact that he wanted to be alone. Yeah. He just wanted to be alone, you know, and um in the same time, guys, this is this is important for those of you whether you're single or married. This is key and this is important that you have to get away from the hustle and the bustle of life. You have to sometimes even get out of your own environment, leave for the day, go somewhere or go to a lake, go to wherever you need to go to. You know, and and just decompress. Some of you live in big cities, you know, some of you live in little towns. Um it's really it's really important, man. It truly is, you know, and and what Sharon and I do, you know, the devotionals we love, we love to do it, man. We love to everything that we do, man, we we do it out of our hearts. But we have to know that we're just human. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to I'm going to speak on on behalf of of the women, of the mothers because I know that a lot of our times um a lot of the times our responsibility sometimes, you know, and it could be for a single father as well. Because a lot of the times we find our responsibilities to be a little bit different and their responsibilities that sometimes we can never set aside. Because sometimes we do have responsibilities that we cannot set aside that we cannot leave for tomorrow. And I know what that feels like. Because I know what it's like to constantly say, I can't leave that for tomorrow. Um it it's it has to be done today. Because the everyday household chores, the everyday taking care of the family, the everyday taking care of the kids, the every every day, you know, of of the the worrying of a mother, yeah. the every day responsibility of what a parent does and um I I get it. I totally get it, you know, the taking care of of what a wife does. Um and it just it's not that that we're, you know, we're just constantly being the servant or anything like that. It's just it's just the natural ability of what we are as a wife, you know, and a mother and a, a just a caretaker. That's what we are, you know, and we do it out of the love of our heart. It just becomes so routinely every day that it just becomes so natural in us. But we have to really, really, really kind of force ourselves um, to, to step away from those things. And I know it's really, really hard because I'll even tell you that even today, as I was walking out, how many times did I go back into that door? Yes. I had the car running for like 10 minutes. Guys, I'm like, seriously, woman, like, let's I go. Went in, was looking for the laptop. Then I was like, no, then I went in, I was going to grab the iPad. And then I grabbed, you know, a clipboard and then I grabbed my... To do church stuff, like... Okay, guys. I'm sorry, is that the point you're getting yes, to? Yes, I was grabbing... I got ahead of you. you. Know, I was grabbing my folder with all my notes inside, um, my notebook and everything. And guys, I was just grabbing it all. And then I was bringing, you know, my really nice mug that Raina bought for me so that I can fill it up with coffee so that I can stay up tonight, okay? Because I was planning to stay up. And I was like, you know, I'm going to stay up really late and get this all done. I was planning to just do all of this while we were on the drive and everything. And I stopped dead right before I walked out that door. And I just looked at David and I and I said, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I put it all down, guys. And I am so serious that I put it all down and I just put it to the side and I left it there. And I said, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this. Because I, I realized that if I did that, I was going to be looking down and not looking out the window and I was not going to enjoy the drive. I was not going to enjoy the scenery and I was going to be preoccupied and, and, you know, and worried and thinking about other things instead of thinking about the drive and enjoying the drive and enjoying the scenery and enjoying the conversation with my husband and all of that. And these are the things that he is saying that sometimes we have to make the sacrifice. Sometimes we have to take the time and set that time aside and it may be a little hard and it may be a little bit of extra time that we're going to have to set for the next day 
But you know what? The sacrifice is worth it. The same sacrifice that Jesus took on the cross for us is the same sacrifice that we have to take for yeah. our families. The same sacrifice that we have to do, we have to make a little sacrifice sometimes for ourselves. For ourselves, guys. Yeah. It's the self-love. We have to love ourselves enough because guess what? Our children benefit from us. Our husbands benefit from us. Because if we're not if we're not around, if we're not around, then what good are we to our families if we're not here? We need to be here. We need to be strengthened. We need to be we need to be here in good health. We need to be here in good health and mind, body and soul and everything for them to be able to benefit from us. And if we are not, guys, then what good are we? The Lord wants us to take care of us, our temple, everything in every way. And we need to love ourselves in every way that we can. And it has to start by sacrificing that time for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I'm just thinking right now some examples of, of how key. Um, I remember my dad always telling me, you got to always change the oil in your car. And for a long time, I never listened. You know what I mean? I, I would just drive and drive and drive and drive. I'm talking about when I was younger in my 20s. Because in my mind, I'm like, car's driving good. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, once in a while, I check the dipstick. If it needs a little bit of oil, I'll just pour a little bit in. I'll just keep it moving. And I never truly understood, you know, what my dad was talking about. Um, you got to understand, you know, back then, I had cars and... I mean, I don't know. I don't know what my responsibility was or, or whatnot. You yeah. know, I don't know. But I found myself saying this to, to my sons and even Aaliyah now, you know, is I'm like, listen, you got to change your oil. You got to change your oil. Um, keep up on that because, and I remember one of my sons, I think it was, I don't know if it was Gabriel or, or David. They were like, man, I went over there and it's like 30 something dollars, dad to do it yourself you know you yeah. buy the oil and the filter yeah. and everything and i said listen i know that seems like a lot but do you understand that by oiling your car by having fresh oil in your car that car will last you longer not only that you'll get more mileage so you think you're wasting 35 bucks on oil but in actuality you're saving because you're you're making the engine run efficiently and when the engine runs efficiently it's not so tired going up hills it's not so tired going on the long run with the air cushion condition full blast and, and your engine isn't working so hard so in the long run that 35 dollars was nothing compared to a broken engine or or and i'm not just the oil the spark plugs the air filter all that stuff you know you think you're spending money but you're not you're actually investing Yes. So I say that to say this, is that when I start to see my wife get a little wound up at home and because she gets so busy, you know, and I'm just like, man, you know, I have stuff to do today, too, and this and that and and whatever. And but you know what? It's worth the investment to say, I'm going to put this stuff aside. We're going to fill this tank of gas and we're going to go and. It doesn't have to be an unfancy. We're going to go eat whatever it is, you know what I mean? And just go and get out of here. That's an investment in your marriage that will leave a well-running marriage. Yeah. It'll, it'll be a well-oiled marriage, and it'll go a long way, man, because this is the stuff that matters. You know, because, you know, and, and when, when, all, when all is said and done, 20, 30 years down the line, she ain't going to remember all those errands you had to do. She ain't going to remember all that little stuff you want to do, all the extra hours you wanted to work and not be home. You know what she's going to remember? Days like today. And those are the same things that your children are going to remember, guys. Same thing with kids. You know, you know, for you fathers as well, you know, uh, you're working those extra hours, you know, you're working the swing shifts, you know, you're working, you know, all the time. You're workaholics, you know. <sighs> You know, think about think about the time uh, invested into your family. Um, would you rather be investing into all the extra money than to be at home with your children and sacrifice the, the, the extra the extra stuff? Because sometimes, you know, a family can do without the extra stuff and and learn how to budget a little bit. 
so that they can have father around, you know, so they can have mother around. Because I will tell you one thing, that a child will appreciate having mom or dad around more than having that those real super expensive shoes or the, that real super expensive, you know, sweater or something. Because the memories with mom and dad are so much, you know, better than anything. You know, I, I saw the comment that somebody was saying that they were they seen, you know, my my backyard, you know, that it looked like a backdrop or something like that. You know, I put lights lights up in the backyard. And you know why I did that? Because I wanted I wanted to to make it look so I wanted to make it look nice back there for me to want to go back out there and spend time with my family when we had our little barbecues and stuff because I don't have a big old luxurious house guys you know we rent it's not our house not you one know? of those <laughs> Me, I definitely don't have anything like that it's a simple little old house in Stockton but I love it but you know what I've decorated my home with everything from thrift stores and everything I love to decorate I don't have new stuff but guess what I've come from from you know from a very humble beginnings. I've never known what it's like to ever shop at a at, at a department store or do any of that. And you know what? That's okay because you know what? The Lord taught me how to make stuff and how to decorate and how to you know buy things from thrift stores and to recreate them and to make them beautiful. And you know what? And that's what I do. I put things together. You know what? And I told my son, you know, help me throw some lights out here and make it look pretty. And you know what? And that's what I did. I put it out there why so that when my family and friends come over we we can create an environment so that it can make it comfortable and and we can do something with that so that's why when when people say like wow you know what yes wow because i'm excited that i can actually give an environment for our families to build memories and to do something wonderful and i love it i love doing that the same thing that we do at our church whenever we have an event or something I give it my all and I and I want everything I want people to experience that you know I tell everybody you know what when you do something do your best at it that's why yeah. for me guys presentation is so important I tell them don't just do a hundred give it a hundred and twenty percent if you have something in a Tupperware put it on a platter make it look beautiful who cares if it comes from the 99 cent store you know because even the things from the 99 cent store can look like a million bucks it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. Humility can still look beautiful, beautiful and presentable unto the Lord. It doesn't matter. It could still look wonderful. Yeah. You know what was nice, though? You did go to the department store for your son's wedding, and that was awesome to I see you did do that. For the <laughs> you know what? That was my first time, guys. Was it Dillard's? Or, yeah, yeah, I went to Dillard's. It was my first time. Okay, I have to admit this. It was my first time ever buying a dress from a department store and it was beautiful I loved it it was a beautiful lavender dress that I bought from the department store and then I actually bought myself another and it was only 60 something dollars my blue dress but to me that as the dress from the department store the other one was like you know a little bit more but for me that that's a lot for me guys to be honest with you and I, I bought a, a blue dress because you liked it and I said that one day I was gonna wear it on a date with you and man it was it was a beautiful experience because I've never done that you know and I'll share I'll share a story with you guys um, you know I've I was a mom at 14 years old and I had never I had never experienced, you know, I never had the opportunity to grow up to be that type of woman that um, knew about makeup and knew about a lot of the, a lot about the fancy stuff that a lot of women know of about nowadays. I would just slap the stuff on and that was it, you know? And I remember one day, um, David, I told David, I need mascara. Do you remember that story? Mm -hmm. I told David, I need mascara. And he was driving Uber here in San Francisco. And um, I remember he had dr driven somebody who worked at Sephora, it was. It was at Sephora, and, she, and he had told her, you know, well, you know, my wife, you know, she might need some makeup. And so she gave him one of the cards, and he had told me, well, she I... She gave me a card? Yeah, she gave uh -huh. you a card. And you said, well, I'll take you to Sephora, and you can get a... a 
a mascara. I got nervous, guys, because I don't know nothing about fancy makeup or anything. I just go to Rite Aid or I'll just go to whatever and just get whatever kind of makeup because and I've bought, always bought the same thing for 15 whatever years you know and so he he takes me and I walk in and the lady starts asking me well do you need this do you need that and she asked me some really difficult questions and I got really nervous <laughs> and I walked out of there and I didn't know how to compose myself and I literally did start crying because it was overwhelming <laughs> And I started crying, you guys, because I didn't know how to answer her because I felt really dumb. I felt really, really dumb because I'm like, can you just take me to Rite Aid, please? Can you just take me? Because I don't know anything about this stuff. I don't think you understand. It almost felt like it almost felt like your story that you share about the person who goes to the palace and doesn't know how to behave, oh, yeah. you know? Because you don't know that you're royalty. I mean, is Sephora even high, high end? I don't. I don't. I don't see, know. Still to this day, I don't yeah, even uh, know. Maybe. I don't know. Is don't Sephora know. high end, ladies? I don't know. But see, that's that's the thing is that, you know, I don't forget where I come from, you know, and I'm I'm grateful to stay humble, and I want to be humble like this for the rest of my life, guys. You know, I'm 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 grateful. You know, for me, what I want to say too is that um. I know I didn't bust out my Bible and whatnot, but I just wanted to be a relaxed devotional because it's like the whole day. Because some of you are even probably saying like, why are you even doing a devotional? Let that be your time. But no, man, we can take a few minutes to talk with you. But, um, you know, we have 500 devotionals. A lot of them are very in-depth and biblical so today, I just wanted to hang out, hang out with my wife, hang out out here looking at the ocean. At the same time, hang out with you and, and not make this a big old theological thing. There's nothing wrong with talking about the Lord and not having, we don't have to have a Greek lexicon and a Hebrew, you know, like we're just here chilling, talking about what comes to our hearts and comes to our mind and just sitting here right minutes before we hit record. We're like, you know what? Jesus rested. You know, he rested, and, and, and him being the Savior, if he needed rest, if he needed to get away, then we do too, and and you guys do too, you know, and it doesn't take a whole lot, you know. I remember having a conversation with my son David. Um, he he came over, because I think some of you might remember the conversation. He, he just recently got his first girlfriend, I think he's 19, hmm. first girlfriend, and he was like, dad do you are you supposed to pay for her every time we eat and just like he was asking all these questions to both of us anyways you know i told him you know i said um sometimes you don't always have to don't overspend your money don't over overdo it i mean nothing wrong with taking her somewhere nice but man if she can't handle going to a taco truck i don't know mijo because you grew up going to the taco truck that's you that's who we are mm -hmm. that's how i raised you to be i've raised you to go to restaurants and i've raised you to go to a taco truck and i said so you got to be real remember and you yeah. you shared a little bit of that too i yeah. said but anyways this is the point i want to get to is i told them i said you know every time um we went to san francisco while you were growing up do you remember sometimes um we would picnic at the park and he goes i hated that dad <laughs> i hated that because i he, he knows that San Francisco has food, man. Yeah. There's restaurants and little vendors, and my son knows. He's but like, we would never do that when we had them all. Yeah, well, hardly, <laughs> hardly. Yeah. We hard, sometimes we did. We took you them know. to the pizza place. Yeah, it all <laughs> depended. And I said, you know why I did that, son? I said, because we didn't have no money. I said, and same, actually the same reason. I said, a heat wave was going to happen. It was going to be really hot in, in Stockton. And we were like, you know what? Let's take them to the park in San Francisco and we'll just take some sandwiches, uh, sandwich stuff and some chips and sodas and water. And that way we get them out of the house, go somewhere where it's cooler and and get get away, you know. And he's like, Dad, I had no idea that that's why you did that. I didn't realize and I hated it because I just thought you didn't want to take us to eat somewhere. Yeah. And I was like, Mijo, <laughs> you don't understand. It was a choice of 
okay, we stay in Stockton and I'll take you to eat pizza there or I'll use that money for gas and we'll just eat sandwiches from stuff we had in the house. We already had bread and mayonnaise and mm. so we didn't have to buy nothing. You know, I said, and I chose to take you to San Francisco to the park to get you out of the house. And he's like, I have no idea. That's why you did that. And, but he learned really quick, guys, yeah. because he says... I had to pay for parking. The parking's like 30 something dollars. The food's expensive. And he learned really quick, yeah. guys, so how then, expensive everything is. So it made him appreciate how many times did we take him to San Francisco? Yeah. Them, all the kids, yeah. to San Francisco. And he's like, man, I didn't know that, you know? Because why? Because you sacrifice and you do what you got to do. If, if you have a family to get your family, it doesn't take a million dollars to, to take them somewhere. If it's just, if you have a spouse to take them, or if you're by yourself, you have to treat yourself. You got to yeah. get away. You got to go. You know what I mean? And 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 just you know, take a take a take a book or take an audible. Woo, go wherever yes. you need to go. Whether you know, here's a hold on. Sorry. Here's a beautiful thing is that like it, where we're at in Stockton, we're literally an hour away from this ocean, and we're an hour away from the mountains, Sierra Nevada mountains. So I mean, we have access to a lot of things, but I'm sure everywhere you're at. You have access to a lake or a forest or something. I wouldn't go yeah. to the forest by myself. But anyways, um, ladies, I wouldn't by myself. But I will say this. As a single parent and when I was single, you know what I would do, guys? Though I would do this. I would go to a restaurant and I would, I would invite myself to such a good meal by myself. And I enjoyed my, my alone time. Yeah. And I would take, like he said, I would take a good book or I would study my word. I'd do whatever. And I would go to a restaurant and I'd sit down by myself and I would enjoy it. People would be like, you go eat by your... Heck yeah, I would. Oh, I used to do it all the time. I loved it, guys. I loved my alone time. And you know what? Sometimes there'd be one specific place that became my regular place. And sometimes the waiters and the waitresses became like my friends there. And they just... I just became a regular there because I loved, I made sure that every time, once I, once or twice a month, that became my place to go and to spend that uh, my alone time with the Lord and myself and just spend time there. Yeah, before I met Sharon, um, for a couple of years, I had my one of my sons, David, I had custody of him and he lived with me. But when I got out of prison and there was a time where uh, I was by myself, you know, and I used to go to the movie theater by myself. Um, I'd go to restaurants and then when I got my son, oh, we really went on trips cause he loved hotels. So every once in a while I'd be like, man, where do you want to go? You know, he's like, dad, I want to go to Monterey or dad, I want to go to San Francisco or dad. And we just made it happen, you know? And sometimes, man, there's times when me and David would go somewhere, I'd get a hotel cause the hotel would be like hundred bucks and we'd eat like AM PM burgers. Yeah. He didn't care. <laughs> he did yeah. not care. He just had so much fun taking his PlayStation and hooking it up at the hotel room. You know, we'd be seriously eating Doritos and AMP and burgers, you know. So anyways, guys, like I said, we're just chilling. We're just relaxing. We, we don't have a big old biblical study to do, but hopefully you got something from this. You know, uh, we're going to end the, the devotional because we're we just want to enjoy this. Uh, she brought her camera. Where's if your I camera? Get, right here. But if I get some really good uh, shots, guys, I'll put them on here at the end so you guys can look at them. Okay. Yeah, she has her camera. She loves to do photography. And um, um, I brought the camera that we're going to be doing filming with. So I'm going to kind of mess with the settings while she's taking pictures so I can get used to the camera myself. Yeah. You know, so. Hey guys, we love you guys and uh, I pray that you guys have a beautiful morning, enjoy your coffee and, you know, I almost want to just stay here to watch the, the sunset. It's still a while, sun's up high. So, alright guys, I'm going to show you again one more time. We're Damn, look, that sun's still up there. I know. I wish it would hurry up and go down. What time is it? Well, it's 7 o'clock already. Yeah, it doesn't get dark till 9. I'm not going to stay here two yeah. hours. Yeah, we're not going to stay here that long. So, all right, guys. Um, camera's back. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Bye.